हेलो एवरीवन आई हैव ऑलरेडी कवर्ड अप टू द गेस्टेशनल एज असेसमेंट इन न्यू बॉर्न टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू टेल यू अबाउट द सिस्टेमिक एग्जामिनेशन सो फर्स्ट आई विल कवर द जी और एब्डोमिनल एग्जामिनेशन इन न्यू बॉर्न जी एग्जामिनेशन ऑलवेज स्टार्ट फ्रॉम ओरल केविटी एग्जामिनेशन सो फर्स्ट वी शुड चेक द टंग गम्स एनी कंजनाइटल टीथ then we have to check any lesion over the palate tonsil and also the posteropharyngeal wall then in git examination after oral cavity inspection so we should see the abdominal shape then umbilicus and umbilical cord and cord clamp any malformation of anterior abdominal wall if it is present any visible veins any visible intestinal peristalsis or any scar sinus or fistula in abdominal shape either having the normal abdominal shape you can see in this video also or having the scaphoid abdomen example in congenital diaphragmatic hernia or having the distended abdomen because of intestinal obstruction or necrotizing enterocolitis or patient may be having the congenital kidney disorder or liver disease then we should check the umbilicus and umbilical cord position and shape of umbilicus as you can see in this image also baby is having the centrally placed umbilicus but the shape is protruded not the normal shape then we have to check the umbilical cord blood vessels if the patient is having any discharge or secretion from umbilicus or any mass then we have to mention then examine the abdomen for umbilical cord and umbilical cord clamp normally umbilical cord contain two arteries and one vein and what is the basic difference between artery and vein here in this image you can see these two are the arteries arteries are thick walled small lumen structure and just like a protruded structure while the vein is thin lumen collapsed and larger lumen structure whenever you are inserting the umbilical venous catheter you have to identify the vein then you have to insert and normally uh, umbilical vein positioned at 12 o'clock position so here you can see these two are the arteries and one is vein wherever there is a single umbilical artery then you have to uh, examine the baby for any congenital malformation or any syndrome sometime newborn is having congenital anterior abdominal wall defect in this image you can see newborn is having the omphalocele at the level of umbilicus bowel loops liver and sometime is spleen also herniated and it is covered with the sac and associated with the other congenital malformation this is gastroschisis it is present in the right sided paraumbilical area not covered with the sac and in this umbilical cord is intact and this is really associated with the other congenital malformations here in this image you can see this is umbilical hernia protruded umbilicus is present whenever it is present in newborn period rule out the hypothyroidism and also the any congenital malformation if the baby is healthy and having the umbilical hernia then we have to counsel that this hernia size will increase up to 6 month of age then it will slowly regress by the age of 2 year in 90% children so surgery is not required except in few cases where the complications occur example if the baby is having intestinal obstruction due to the strangulated hernia or having the uh, constipation with abdominal distension with excessive crying so we have to counsel the parents this is soft red pink color lump present over the umbilicus and also a small amount of the fluid uh, secrete from this lump it is umbilical granuloma in this a topical application of silver nitrate or sometime topical steroid can be applied single application of silver nitrate is also effective and if it is not 
disappear by this treatment then surgery can be done normally umbilical cord rise and falls between 6 to 10 days of life sometime delayed separation of umbilical cord occur in preterm baby and even in those who are delivered by the cesarean section delayed separation of umbilical cord can be occur even in healthy baby but whenever there is a delayed separation and baby is having any sign symptoms of infection then we should rule out because sepsis lead to the delayed separation of umbilical cord and also in the cell mediated immunodeficiency disorder baby will have the delayed separation of umbilical cord then we should see the any visible veins as you can see in this image any visible intestinal peristalsis as you can see in this video baby is having the visible peristalsis movement over the abdomen any scar sinus or fistula if it is present then we should mention after inspection palpation should be performed in palpation first superficial palpation then deep in superficial palpation we should palpate all the nine regions of the abdomen and we should check the temperature with the dorsum of hand and for tenderness we should look at the face of the baby if baby is crying or changing the any facial expression that means baby may be having the tenderness then we have to mention that in this particular uh, quadrant or in the region of the abdomen baby is showing the change in the expression of the face deep palpation should be performed for liver spleen kidney and any other mass in deep palpation we should start from the right iliac fossa and we should move upward and with the fingertip or from side of the finger we should palpate the edge of the liver liver normally palpable in the newborn up to 2 cm below the right coastal margin and normal liver span between 4.5 to 5 cm in newborn and for the liver span how to uh, perform i have already explained in one of my video on approach to hepatosplenomegaly and also in the abdominal examination video whenever liver is palpable we have to mention is it tender or non tender then check the consistency soft firm or hard consistency then surface smooth or having the any nodular then margin and edges smooth and round margin is present or not so normal liver is having the all these characteristic findings then we have to perform the deep palpation for the spleen we should start from the right iliac area and we should move uh, towards the spleen and we should palpate the spleen with the fingertip or with the side of the finger spleen tip normally palpable in the newborn it is also non tender soft having a smooth surface and edges are round and also the spleen notch is palpable whenever we are palpating the spleen border then deep palpation for kidney should be done by the bimanual method we have to keep the left hand behind the back and right hand over the abdomen just near to umbilicus and we should push forward left hand and try to feel the lower pole of right kidney which is normally palpable in newborn left kidney is impalpable except if the baby is having any congenital kidney malformation percussion is not useful in newborn so this should not be performed then gi auscultation should be done for the bowel sound we have to assess the bowel activity by placing the stethoscope over the abdominal wall in paraumbilical area for 3 to 5 minutes we have to count the number of time bowel sounds are heard over 1 minute period normal frequency 3 to 4 per minute then we have to categorize is it normal absent 
or diminish or increase bowel sound heard then we should auscultate over the kidney if gruy audible then possibility of renal artery stenosis and auscultation over the liver area should be done if gruy audible that means av fistula can be there so this is all about git examination in newborn thank you so much